Dave Rubin um, is on with uh, Pints with a Quinus. What is this? What is the show? Pints with a that's, Quinus. That's Pints with a Aquinas. Aqu- uh, yeah, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. A, was a lot a, of ideas uh, there. Well, like, an intellectual I, philosopher and saint. But, but also, I like to have a beer. Like, we're just having a beer. We're like, we're sitting around, like, hey. Yeah, it's it a is, disgusting it, title for a show. It, it's like, it's honestly, like, looking at these guys, like, uh, honestly, like, just like dropping in on, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, a, a like, the soft, like, you know, like, like by what I imagine goes on at like prep schools when they're all like doing, you know, they're smoking pot and blowing it into their hit towels or whatever. Maybe that's, that's, <laughs> but, but here is um, Dave Rubin. And I, I, I like, is somebody, I feel like there is somebody who's just printing up these talking points, but when they get a hold of a fricking uh, analogy, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin, do they pass these things around and just like, and maybe I'm going to have to go watch one of these dumb movies, but here's Dave Rubin again. Liberals are like Thanos. People on the left, they think that they can somehow build a perfect system. They will tell you, we're going to eliminate racism, we'll eliminate sexism, we'll eliminate Pause it homophobia. For and now, mo- listen, I've never heard anybody. Never mind on the left or the right for that matter, say we're going to eliminate homophobia or racism or, or or xenophobia. I've heard people say we want to try and lessen it and we would like to get rid of it, but we realize that it's going to be very difficult. I have heard people on the right, let's say on the Supreme Court, say there is no more racism. We hear them say all the time, there's no more racism in the country. There's no more systemic racism. But I haven't heard anybody say, we're going to eliminate this. I don't even know how you would do that. But all right, so go back. Dave Rubin starting off with what he would call a straw man. People on the left, they think that they can somehow build a perfect system. They will tell you, we're going to eliminate racism, we'll eliminate sexism, we'll eliminate homophobia, and blah, blah, blah. Now, to do that, as I said before, you're going to have to kill a lot of people. They're basically (laughs) Thanos from the Marvel movies, from Avengers. Thanos knew that there were finite resources in the universe. And what he said is, I will do the thing that no one else will do. I will Mm -hmm. wipe out half the living organisms in the universe. That's not, but he thought he was the good guy. The good guy doesn't kill half the people. So he sets up the straw man that the left thinks that they're going to eliminate all of these problems and then slides in the other straw man that we're going to do that by killing everyone. Half the people who have, is that what is, is that the, am I reading? Am I, yeah. Did I hear that right? Who's, I wonder who's elaborating that on the left, because I feel like I listen to a lot of leftist voices and like the murder of half of the country hasn't really come up. Well, in a lot I mean, of them. to be fair, Matt, maybe it's just the murder of a third of the country. Maybe <laughs> less. Yeah. I've definitely seen like some really galaxy brain tankies on Twitter who like want to send people to the gulag if they, uh, misgender somebody but i would say that they're in the minority right but even, and the even they don't want wanna... killing right yeah, yeah. You, no you, capital you punishment to, you get to live you know you get some books to read maybe some work to do it's fine it, it just feels like that what happens is is that somehow like ruben and maybe tim pool maybe they get paid per thanos reference hmm. uh, and they so they've got to force this stuff into a thanos frame where they've got a claim that uh, the left wants to kill all people who are racist and xenophobic and transphobic and uh, misogynistic. Big Thanos. <laughs> Big Thanos. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to watch that dumbass movie. Oh, I don't even know what it is. What movie is it? The Avengers Endgame, probably, I think, is the one. So that mean I'm going to have to watch all the Avengers up? No, today? no. That was the best part is when I saw it, when I was telling Matt and uh, Sam about this when I had movie pass I would go to the movie theater near the office on Fridays at, for like the four o'clock show where nobody was 
And I saw that movie. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to know anything. And they just lay out all the exposition for you. You know everything about the universe within the first first 45 minutes. So. Oh, good. All right. All right. Well, I might it's, have it's to watch it. It's a terrible movie, though. I'm sorry. Oh, really? I just I really don't like movies based on comic books in general. I agree. <sighs> yeah. Well. Um... I'll tell you what else you shouldn't like is uh, going through the whole Jim Carrey over because of my son. I have to do that. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Um, well, what about Star Wars, uh, Jamie? It's fine. I saw the first three when I was a kid. I liked them. Haven't um, watched many since. What did, when people talk about Star Wars, what is the, the thing that people celebrate, do you think? Um, the story? Yeah, but what about the story? What I mean, what is what is it about the story that people celebrate? I don't know. It's pretty epic. There's like some underdogs in there. It's fighting the evil empire, right? Mm. It's been a minute since I've seen it. It's the underdogs. It's the fighting of the evil empire. What if I was told you, no, the interesting part about that is the evil empire. What would you think of me, Jamie? Hmm, I'd be intrigued. Yes. Well, uh, I got uh, someone I'd like to introduce you to. His name is Ben Shapiro. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hey Ben, I had a Star Wars question for you. Um, oh, good times. I generally agree with I generally agree with your take good on times. the sequel trilogy. I mean, even if you liked <laughs> yeah. one of those episodes, the the trilogy as a whole was just a, a failure, in my opinion. And I, I noticed that they had announced that um, there's another trilogy scheduled to begin in 2022. And just your opinion on in an ideal world uh, where Disney was getting it right, uh, what would you like to see that next trilogy be about? So I, I've said before that I think that it, there's. Uh, a great series to be made on uh, Darth Plagueis. I think that there's a great series to be made on Darth Bane. Like uh, the, the truth is that what makes the Star Wars universe interesting why, why is, uh, is the is the dark side of the Force. Really and so all the focus philosophy. on the Jedi is actually a lot less interesting than the focus on the dark side of the Force and its seductiveness. Um, so you know, I guess that the High Republic is supposed to be they're, they're sort of prequels. It's based on other Jedi, which is fine. I mean, that, that's all fine. <laughs> they, they haven't really rolled up, rolled out exactly, <laughs> you know, how SJW this is going to be. Uh, uh, I know that I know nice. that the Disney oh, here's, there's kind the of Imagineers yeah. have decided that they're only going to have female heroes from now on, which oh, is absurd yeah, because yeah, Star absurd. Wars is essentially. <laughs> A uh, uh, little boy's property. I mean, if if you look at like the yeah. percentages of people who really are huge Star Wars fans, it breaks down pretty heavily male, I would think. Um, but I haven't seen what the, you know. I'll be curious to see what they do. That means it's their property. Uh, to me, the only yeah. redeeming feature of the of the sequels in in Star Wars is the fact they actually finally explained why Ray was such a, a Mary Sue. Like that, if they had not, then it would have been <laughs> incredibly <laughs> annoying. But yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what they're going to do. I just hope that they don't do what they what they've been pledging to do, which is you know kind of throw in a bunch of SJW nonsense. I, I, it is, there needs to be integrity in Star Wars. Um, uh, there needs to be integrity in Star Wars screenwriting where you don't want to have uh, just women heroes because how is that possible? Also, uh, speaking of little boys, I just want to share this picture of uh, Ben Shapiro and Dan Crenshaw, who's also uh, looked like he'd be tactically valuable for sneaking into tight spaces <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> so, oh my God. So, is is I mean, Ben Shapiro still 12? Is he still he's, like when he came on the he scene? Is, he was like I mean, fifteen. He, he's a literal fetus. He he just said that his favorite thing is a, a property of little boys. Like he's he's thirty six. Mm. He's I mean, thirty six. He's thirty six, and he's like he is. Uh, he's older than me. That is so weird. It is so <laughs> weird that this guy is that invested in Star Wars. Like I've got all the figures. I've yeah. I'm got, I'm getting it in Legos. And I'm also getting in Playmobil. And yeah. I have uh, Darth Pegasus in Playmobil. <laughs> I traded it for the version that was in Lego. And that, of course, was a mistake because I didn't realize that my mom had bought me that for the second night of Hanukkah. And so <laughs> uh, had I known, I wouldn't have traded that one away. Yeah, I really hope it. Special episode of uh, Ben Shapiro show for patrons. So I'll just be going through my Funko Pop collection all day and it's going to be great. I really hope they do a movie where you get to see a stormtrooper going to an urban area that's under riot and see them impose order. I'd like to see that. That's from the dark side of the force sort of angle. But I am just terribly disgusted in the way that they are centering women in this because that is completely <laughs> fantastical. Uh, there is, I mean, I love the idea that these guys complain about the idea of like, it's just not uh, believable to have that many women heroes uh, in this saga. Which, of course, like the whole thing, like to actually 
say like, you know, this seems <laughs> unrealistic to me, you know, that women like you're, they, they take these fantasy movies and just, they cannot, they can't get themselves to the idea of like, well, having women heroes is so um, is is so anachronistic that there's no way boys would ever watch this <laughs> yeah, uh, well, because a- they are rational and well, they are not going to uh, react emotionally to things and they cannot accept it. So it's too just SJW. And I don't think the series is going to do well because of that. Yeah. Well, he also says it should have male heroes because everyone who watches it is a boy, which just speaks to the enormous sense of entitlement on the part of fans that have dogged uh, movie directors forever and are extremely annoying. Well, it's also just sort of like, uh, is there any evidence that boys don't want to see a female, um, you know, a warrior? I went to see Charlie's Use Angels brain. in theater. So uh... yeah, I got news for you. <laughs> Use your logic brain, Sam. No, I like really could not care less about whether there's female heroes in Star Wars, except for the fact that it ruins it for Ben Shapiro. Uh, I'm totally on board uh, if it does that. Well, I, I mean, mean, look, look I, representation in film is like can be overrated, you know, as a symbolic victory, but it also shows like how these sort of like things get naturalized when you just put them as like Ben Shapiro wants them into a f- galaxy far, far away, right? Like it's actually it's actually bad that it is just you, that if if it would just reinforce what Ben Shapiro wants, it would be culturally toxic. And and I will say this too, like like look, I I I, I don't think that um you can dine too too long on these type of things, but it makes a fundamental difference, I think, to a um, to a um, a girl watching uh, these movies. I mean, I you know I watched Star Wars with my daughter. Um, that they can see women represented in these roles, just like men. I mean, there there is you know I, I'm not saying it's a um, um, it, it's it, it should be baseline. It should be baseline. You should be able to watch a movie and regardless of your, um, you know, your, your gender or your uh, race or whatever it is and see at least some notion that someone like you can be a hero. And, you know, for, you know, I think like it's probably taken for granted maybe, you know, but and a, I think it's taken for granted by people who are like me, you know, white males who grew up with like every single hero was a uh, white male. Like it was like, you know, Charlie's Angels was like, whoa, this is radical. You know, these. <laughs> and they still course, report to a man. Fortunately, they were still directed <laughs> by two men, actually, Charlie <laughs> and Bos- uh, Bosley or Boswell or whatever the guy's name was, well, because they couldn't they couldn't possibly they couldn't possibly strategize on their own. But. But I mean, the it, it should just be like par for the course. And we, you know, we should get to the point where that's not what we're talking about because it's no longer important because it's just not an issue anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think cultural shifts generally follow shifts in power in society and not the other way around. But, well, I, but certainly, certainly it's better to have female heroes than not to have them if I have to make that choice. Also, right. oh, go ahead. Well, I don't know. I, you know, like, look, I can tell you that from the perspective of like uh, of Shapiro, I don't know if Shapiro exactly, but certainly from whence he came, uh, Breitbart felt that politics were downstream from culture. Yeah, and- I mean, I think they're wrong about that. I mean, there's a because one counterpoint is like, um, look at like the black billionaire, right? As like black wealth has been completely just destroyed. Um, like that, that would be one counterpoint that like, like black people are more represented in media than they were 40 years. I mean, this is hard to say true because you had the Cosby shows and you had, you had more than I think we remember back then. But I, I think that it's masking actually, um, it's masking robbery, <laughs> honestly, like the representation of that when it's done in the context of, you know, wealth inequality, like we're seeing today. Um, I mean, I think there's, there's a difference, there's a difference between sort of like archetypes and then what the stories are themselves. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the stories also, uh, you know, also again, if they can function to tell a lie, um, they can also function to tell a truth, Mm. right? I mean, there's, if there is value to, um, 
to uh, capital to tell a lie in these shows about what's going on, then um, then there there must be some efficacy to it. Right. Another thing. Be, go ahead. Uh, I mean, go ahead. I was just going to say the other thing that's interesting is outside the specific conversation, then when the New York Times calls him the cool kids philosopher, you see how kids get onto this crap, right? Because they probably owe oh, some Star Wars content. They all, yep. th- him and Ruben and, you know, Tim Poole, they just talk about kid shit all day and get clicks from these kids. Yeah. Yes, and I mean, we're just going to have to start you. I know. It. I, honestly, like all I'm thinking mm-hmm. is like, shit. <sighs> Can we talk about Spider-Verse? Because that was pretty cool. Meanwhile, Reagan wants us to cancel Paw Patrol. It's like, Reagan, why, why are you closing these avenues down to us? Yeah, I mean, they get to have their Joe Camel in Ben Shapiro. Let us have ours. Exactly. Well, Paw Patrol might be a little bit younger than our demo. Yeah, it's good to start them young. We can get in before the, the, they get to Thanos and Star That's Wars. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Chase made it really clear. Uh, you know, Chase always was willing to do whatever. I can't remember the other guy's name. I can't remember any of it. I blocked it out. It was a tough <laughs> time for me. Call from a 319. Uh, I got Saul watching Phineas and Ferb now, and so I'm feeling a little bit better. Call from a 319 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? 